video, I'll be teaching you about the game of roulette. We'll start off by teaching you how to play the game, and then I'll tell you how to win. So, are you all ready? Good, let's begin. Virtually all American casinos use a double zero roulette wheel, which has pockets numbered from 1 to 36, plus zero and double zero for a total of 38 pockets. This is in contrast to Europe, where a single zero wheel is usually used, but we'll get back to that later. There are usually six seats at the roulette table, and to help the dealer differentiate what each player is betting, every player is assigned a different colored chip, which they purchase right at the table. Each table has its own minimum chip values, and that information is usually posted on a sign at the table. As an example, let's say a table has a 50 cent minimum chip value. This means that when you give the dealer your money, the colored chips he gives you in return must have a minimum value of 50 cents each. So if you gave the dealer $20, he would ask you what value you wanted on the chips, and if you said 50 cents, then he would give you 40 colored chips. If you prefer, you could say you wanted the chips valued at $1 each, and he would give you just 20 chips rather than 40. You can make the value of your colored chips anything you want, and later on, when you're done playing at that table, you must exchange your colored chips back for regular chips before leaving. The colored chips have no value anywhere else in the casino, so make sure that you don't leave the table with them. Besides the minimum chip value, there is also a minimum amount that must be bet on each spin of the wheel, and once again, those amounts will be posted on a sign at the table. In the example you're looking at, both of the minimum bets on the inside and outside are only $1. However, they could be different. For example, if it said $2 minimum inside, $5 minimum outside, the inside part means that when betting on any of the 38 individual numbers, the total of all your bets must be $2. You can make two different $1 bets or one $2 bet. It doesn't matter, except the total of all your bets on the inside numbers must be at least $2. The $5 minimum outside means that any bets you make outside of the numbers area must total at least $5. On the outside bets, however, you can't make a $3 bet and a $2 bet to meet the minimums. You have to bet at least $5 every time. After you've exchanged your cash for colored chips, you're ready to place your first bet. So let's see what your options are. You can make a straight bet where you bet on one number, and if it comes in, you'll be paid 35 to 1. The casino advantage on this bet is 5.26 percent. Another choice you have is to do a split. This is where you put a chip on the line that separates two numbers. If either number wins, you'll be paid at 17 to 1. The casino advantage on this bet is 5.26 percent. If you put a chip in an area that splits four numbers, this is called a corner bet. And if one of those four numbers comes in, you'll be paid off at 8 to 1. The casino advantage on this bet is 5.26%. If you put a chip at the beginning of a row of three numbers, this is called a street bet. And if any one of those three numbers shows up, you'll be paid off at 11 to 1. The casino advantage on this bet is 5.26%. You can also put a chip on the line between two streets so that you have a double street covered. And if any one of those six numbers wins, you'll be paid off at 5 to 1. The casino advantage on this bet is 5.26%. The only other bet you can make on the inside numbers is the five number bet where you place one chip in the upper left corner of the number one box and it covers the numbers one, two, three, zero, and double zero. If any of those numbers comes in, you'll be paid off at six to one. And can you guess what the casino advantage is on this bet? Nope, it's not 5.26%. Actually, the casino advantage on this bet is 50% higher at 7.89%. It's the worst bet you can make on a double zero wheel, and you should never make this bet. There are three bets you can make that will pay you even money, or one to one, which means that if you win, you'll get back one dollar for every dollar you bet. First is red or black. If you put a chip on red, then a red number must come up in order for you to win. The same thing goes for black. You only win if the ball lands on a black number. Then we have odd or even. If you put a chip on odd, then the ball must land on an odd number in order for you to win. If you bet on even, you only win if the ball lands on an even number. Finally, there are 1 through 18 and 19 through 36. 
if you bet on 1 through 18, then you will only win if a number from 1 through 18 comes in. And of course, if you bet on 19 through 36, you only win if a number comes in that is 19 or higher. The only other bets left are the dozens and columns bets. If you look at the roulette betting layout, you can see three areas that each correspond to 12 number sections on the table. The one marked first 12 covers the numbers from 1 to 12. The one marked second 12 covers the numbers from 13 to 24. And the other one marked third 12 covers the last section of numbers from 25 to 36. If you bet on the first 12, you would win if a number from 1 to 12 came in, and you would lose if anything else came in, including zero or double zero. The same principle holds true for each of the other dozen bets, where you would win if a number in that section came in and you would lose if anything else showed up. All dozen bets pay off at 2 to 1. The last bet to look at is the column bet, and that also pays 2 to 1. There are three possible column bets you can make, and you'll notice that each area corresponds to the numbers in the column directly above it. So, if you put a chip under the first column, you will win if any of the numbers in that column come in and you will lose if any other number, including zero or double zero, shows up. Once again, the same rule is in effect for each of the other columns, where you would win if the number appeared in the column above your bet, and you would lose if it didn't. Once the players have had time to make their bets, the dealer will start to spin the roulette ball in the opposite direction that the wheel is spinning, and then shortly after that announce, no more bets. At that point, you need to stop making your bets and wait to see the result of the spin. Once the ball has dropped into a pocket and a winning number is chosen, the dealer will announce it and put a marker on top of that winning number on the layout. At that point, the dealer will remove all of the losing bets and then start to pay off the winning bets. If you are one of the winners, your chips will be given to you, but you need to make sure that you don't touch your original bet until all of the winning bets on the table are paid off. Once all bets are paid off, the dealer will remove the marker and you can then remove your original bet. All right, now you know all the possible bets and you know how to make them. So the next question is, how do you win? And the answer to that is very simple. You have to get lucky. You see, there is no skill involved in roulette, so there is no best strategy for how to play. Yes, you should avoid the five number bet, but other than that, you can just throw your bets around the table and hope that you get lucky enough to win. I really wouldn't recommend roulette as a good game to play because there are other games that offer much better odds. For example, if you play blackjack and memorize the basic strategy charts, you can lower the casino's edge to around one half of one percent, which is ten times better than playing roulette. But if you really insist on playing the game, I have a few suggestions for you. Number one, go to Atlantic City. In Atlantic City, if you make an even money outside bet like red or black, odd or even, 1 through 18 or 19 through 36, and if zero or double zero come up, the state gaming regulations allow the casino to take only half of your bet. Because you only lose half of your bet, this also lowers the casino edge on these outside bets in half to 2.63%. This rule is only in effect for even money bets on double zero wheels so keep in mind that on all other bets, the house edge still remains at that very high 5.26%. The second suggestion is to find a casino with a single zero wheel, because the house edge on that game is only 2.70%. To make it even better, you should try to find a casino that offers the surrender rule similar to Atlantic City casinos, and that would cut the casino advantage in half to 1.35%, which would make it one of the better bets in the casino. It may be hard to find such a game in the U.S., but many European casinos do offer it. And a final suggestion for you is to win quickly. Naturally, this is easier said than done, but in reality, if you want to win at roulette, the best suggestion I can give you is that you try to win quickly and then walk away from the table. Because the longer you continue to bet, the longer that big 5.26% house edge will keep eating away at your bankroll. One major principle of gambling is that in order to win, you should only play the games that have the lowest casino edge, and unfortunately, roulette is not one of them.